what I pay premiums for. Mr. Atherton, a guard was shot and killed trying to save your diamonds. This is trouble for me. That's why you pay your taxes. Now, would you mind stepping in my office, please? Hey, Mike. I got the boy in the pen. What do you want me to do with him? Bring him in my office. Yes, sir. Hello, Libby. Hi, darling. How are you? Listen, can I call you right back? I'm, I'm as busy as the old woman in the shoe, and my Hamlet didn't show up tonight. Yeah, well, that's what I'm calling you about. What is that? That's what you're calling about. We arrested him. You what? Well, not Richie. Not, not Richie Wilkin. Yeah. Picked him up a little while ago. Well, Adam, why? What for? Suspicion of murder. Libby? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here. Just give me a second to get used to the idea. Honey, this is what I need from you. Did you see him at all down there today? This afternoon or tonight at all? Sit down, Richie. You got a visitor on the way upstairs to see you. Is he the one? He's the one. Looks so young. You have to have the handcuffs? Mr. Law, wherever there's a suspicion of murder. Oh, Frank, yeah. would you take Mr. Atherton to the squad room and get a statement from him? Yes, sir. Come with me, Mr. Atherton. How 
you feeling, Richie? Is there any other way to live? Just tell my friends, Richie Wilkins says this is the life. Richie, I just spoke with Miss Kingston. She said to tell you she's very sorry. Sure, I'll, be I'll bet she is. She... Oh, poor Libby. She's got to go out in the middle of the night now and, and find some other jerk to play Hamlet for her. Adam, I want to talk to Richie for a minute. Richie? How many times have you been picked up? Well, you, can, you can read it in the file. What's the story? I mean, there is no story. That simple? You broke into a plant, killed a god, and broke everything you get your hands on? That's right. Why? Because he got in my way. Anybody with you? No. Nobody was with me. What happened to the diamonds? Look, who's the visitor? Is that my father? Richie? Hey, what, did you, what did you bring my mother here for? Are you all right, honey? Yes, I'm all right, Mom. But I should have brought that sweater of yours. These men all the time? It's all right. They, they don't hurt. Only when he's out of his cell, Mr. Wilkins. Right. I should have brought that sweater. Oh, Mom, oh, don't. A what? A why did you have to do it? Mom, I just cut it out. Cut it out! Look, will you take these things off me? I'm not going to hurt anybody. It's the law, son. Now, come on. Yeah, the law. All kinds of laws. Some with iron cuffs and some you, you, you can't even see the way they got you all tied up. Yeah. Mr. Atherton would like to know if he could go home. I got his statement. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Atherton. Mr. Atherton? Oh, look at me, Mr. Atherton. Look at me! You know who I am now, don't you? I'm the one that busted up your place tonight. Me! And I don't want you to forget it! I never want to see your face again! Cut it out now, now Richie. Down. Listen, this will work against you. Come on, Richie, sit down. Now, just sit down and hold on. Come on, now, sit down. Get a hold of yourself. All right, Richie. Now, why was it so important to let him know that you were the one that busted up his factory? Because I want to see, I want to make him see his own dirty work. Do you know that when he fires somebody, he hires somebody just to do his firing for him? Like when he fired my father today. Not, it wasn't face to face, it was second hand. My pop, he's an old man. He went to work looking like 60. And he came out looking like 163. That's, that's, that's what Atherton did to him. And never, never even had to look at his face when he was doing it. No, let me, let me say it. I, I want them to hear the whole story. I want them to hear how they just threw him out. I want them to hear how I let them know that my old man, he has a wife and a kid. 
Oh, I... Oh, I die, Horatio. The potent poison... The potent poison quite... Or crows any... Uh, well, listen, what do you... What do you think big shots like, uh, you know, Brando and, and Rock Hudson, what do you think they make in a year? Like a million dollars? Potent poison? I bet your sweet left foot. What are you doing home? What am I doing home? I'm a big shot. I decided to take the afternoon off. Boss, I said, it's a little stuffy in the office today. I think I'll take the afternoon off. Hey, Pop. Pop, come on, will you? Hey, just lay off that stuff. You, you, you know what the doc said. When I want the advice from you, I'll make an appointment. I got can. We had a maid, huh? A vice president in charge of brooms. Didn't pay much, but it was steady. Now it ain't so steady. What happened, Pete? My mother used to say to me, Pete, get your schooling and keep your health. They can't take that away from you. Pop. Mom wants to know what happened. You know those industrial diamonds? They make drills out of them, grinding wheels. Real diamonds. They're not pretty, you wouldn't wear them. They're hard. What happened? I was sweeping up. I'm vice president in charge of Brums, so I was sweeping up. That's what I'm supposed to do. Well, they were using some of the diamonds on one of the benches there, a couple of hundred dollars worth, I guess, and they knocked them on the floor. My mind was someplace else. So I swept him up. And I kept sweeping and I kept sweeping. So they swept me. Yeah, well, that's an accident. Listen, what? Didn't you tell him what happened? Yeah, I told him. Hey, cut it out. What, are you chicken? You know, you should have split their heads open. Now, you watch your mouth. I'm your father. Did you ask them how you were going to... Feed your family. I don't care how I feed my family. Do you? And I'll slap your face if you don't show some respect. Now cut it out. Do you? Uh, I want to kill the whole world. <laughs> looking for Lester. Who is Lester? Lester, he's my best friend. I went down to Charlie Bates. Lester and me used to hang around down at Charlie Bates. Charlie was teaching the both of us how to be mechanics. So, you know, we'd always have a trade. You know, like him. Hey, Richie. Charlie, hey, Charlie. Turn off the machine, will you, for a second? Hey, uh, look, Charlie, my old man got canned, and I need a full-time job. I ain't got nothing right now, Richie. I'm just scraping along myself. Oh, drop dead, Charlie. told him what was what, the way I felt. So then we went up on the roof.
so it, it got to be night and I was I was down at the factory only the, by this time I knew what I was going to do I was going to rob them blind and wreck them Just stand there and let him? I... I thought he was going to shoot me. Richie, would you give that statement to a police stenographer? Yeah. All right. I'll send one down to you. It's not it. Oh, Mom! Hey, tell Pop that I'm sorry I hit him. Now, maybe he doesn't, uh, won't even speak to me after what happened, but look, just tell him I want to see him. Please. Doesn't he know? You know what? What happened to Pa? Come on, what happened to Pa? Tell me, I want to know! What happened to Pa? Tell me, I want to know! Mom! Mom, I said, I, I want to know what happened to Pa! Mom! All right, son, all right.
Wilkin. This young lady here is a police stenographer. She is making a legal transcript. Of course, you understand that anything and everything that you might say will be held against you in court. I understand. Let the record show that this man has been advised of his rights in the matter of protection of counsel. That he's speaking freely of his own free will without duress or coercion. Now, do you object or disagree with anything that I have said? No, that's right. Fine. Put it down that this man's name is Peter Milton Wilkin, W-I-L-K-I-N, that he resides at 409 Orchard Street in the city of New York, and that he was apprehended at approximately 10.22 p.m. this date, on or around the premises at 815th Avenue, this city. Said premises being occupied by a tool and dye works, that Peter Milton Wilkin was apprehended while fleeing from said address and that he was arrested on suspicion of entering and breaking with intent to commit grand theft, and also on suspicion of committing murder while attempting to carry out the crimes just mentioned. Put it down that these facts were spoken in the presence of Peter Milton Wilkin in a manner loud enough for him to hear and plain enough for him to understand. Now, Mr. Wilkin, is that all clear to you? Yes, that's clear. Fine. Now... If you have anything to say, would you say it to the young lady? Well, regardless of what my kid told you, what I'm about to tell you is the truth, how it really happened. I killed a guard. I'm responsible. I don't know what my boy was doing there or why you arrested him. Maybe he was trying to find me. Mr. Wilkins, why don't you... Uh... Start at the beginning, huh? Well, the beginning was this morning, when I was fired. I deliberately set out to get drunk. What I had in mind by getting drunk was to find some guts to tell my wife and my kid about losing my job. Oh, I, I die, Horatio. The potent, the potent poison quite o'ercrows my spirit. I... Hey, pal, what do you, uh, listen, what do you think big shots like, like Brando and Rock Hudson, what, what do you figure they make a year, about a million dollars? Important poison. <laughs> you bet your sweet left foot. Uh, what are you doing home, Pete? What am I doing home? I'm a big shot, that's all. I want to be home, I want to be home. <laughs> That's a very good question. They're going to pay. They're going to pay plenty. Oh, Pop, will you lay off the booze? Look, you know what the doc said. When I want your advice, I'll make an appointment. I got canned. Just like it was a day of labor, they caught sleeping in a loft. How'd it happen? What happened? Oh, some bonehead made a mistake and they blame me. But they're not going to get away with it. I figure they owe me something and I'm going to collect. Yeah, well, I'm sure when they all get calmed down, they'll take you back. Who wants to go back? You crazy or something? Let them come after me. Let, the, let them ask. You know something? They'll need three vice presidents to do the work I was doing. Yeah, yeah well, now, look, mate. if you explain to them what happened... I ain't gonna explain nothing to nobody. Call me a thief. I think I'd lower myself to steal a lousy couple of hundred bucks of their industrial diamonds. Well, I'm gonna show them what stealing really is. I'm going to steal 15,000 bucks worth of their industrial diamonds right out from under their nose. And then I'm going to do it right tonight and then let them fire me. I'm going down there and steal them blind. I'm going to leave them a calling card they'll never forget. Oh, partner, cut it out. Just cut it out, will you? Richie, he doesn't mean it. Now, he's just talking. He got hurt, so he's talking. Oh, yeah? Now, uh, just let's see. Who's talking? Who is talking hey, about me? Leave my alone. Get out of here. 
Now we're going to find out who's just talking and who's going to talk last. You come on! Cut it out! I'm sorry, Pop. I'm sorry. Who oh, needs you? Who needs you? All right! Who needs you? Who needs any of you? Who needs you? I got a little drunker and I got to feeling bad about Richie and I went looking for him. What time was this? I don't remember. I was too drunk. Afternoon, hours. Hey, 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 Charlie. Uh, where's Richie? He came in, he went out. Hey, what's the matter? You two have a fight? No, I, I got to find him and tell him never mind about the diamonds. I... I ain't going to steal them. They can stay there like a rod. I ain't going to take them. Uh, Mr. Wilkins, uh, are you going to fall on your face and keep walking around in that condition? Uh, he's, he's right. Ah, <laughs> Lester, you're my son's best friend, huh? <laughs> hey, Lester, you want to go look for him and tell him to come home? And I'll be waiting for him. I'll be sober and just waiting for him, huh? I mean, look for him maybe down a settlement house, doing that play. Huh? Like, sure, sure. If, if you promise to go home and sleep it off. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> By that time, I was feeling no pain at all. I loved the whole world. The whole idea of robbing anyone was too much for me. How can you steal from anybody when you love everybody? So I went home and slept for a couple of hours. job tomorrow, huh? Rosie, I'm 50 years old, and I don't have a trade. Who's going to give me a job? Oh, come on, now you can find a new one. You know, just once again, just for five minutes, I'd like to be a kid again. And have somebody take care of me. Oh, oh my. Oh. Hey. Where's Richie? Well, that's why I woke you, hon. He's not home yet. What time is it? Well, it's after nine. I've been out looking for him and I couldn't find him. You know, Petey took you awful serious about stealing those diamonds. Well, I'll find him. Don't you worry, I'll find him. He wasn't at the settlement house, so I figured maybe he was looking for me. I was sure he was at the place, and I was sure he was looking for me. I had to get him out of there before he did something bad.
do? I couldn't let him shoot my kid. I wasn't trying to hurt him, just keep him from shooting my kid. And then the gun went off. You don't believe me, do you? No, Mr. Wilkins. We don't believe it. slow as it is. I got two fellas on vacation. I got three or four on sick leave. Breakfast? Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Chief. Well, honey, what's your impression? Well, as far as I can see, it's right. Richie came to rehearsals an hour and a half late. Well, then. Oh, thanks, Frank. And he behaved exactly as he tells us. But he never said what, where, when, or why. I don't know if you want me to talk about anything else. I say, anything you can think of. Well, according to Richie's father, he sent Lester to look for Richie. Well, ne Lester never showed up at the settlement house, as far as I know. But the father said when he phoned the settlement house, Richie wasn't there. Well, he never spoke to me. But that doesn't mean very much. Well, lots of other people there to answer the phone. It was ringing all night. Adam, make a note. Find out who Richie's father did talk to when he phoned the settlement house, huh? Frank, I got an idea. Get a statement from that Lester kid. Find out what he says he and Ricky talked about when they were on the roof, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Well, there's a lot of things I don't know, but I know one thing. Both the father and son are lying. Okay, Murph. Thanks. Listen, I want to help you all if I can, you know, but I don't want to fry a buddy either. Yeah, well, maybe you could help him a lot, too. There's a lot of things working against him in this case. Now, what's your full name and street address? Uh, Lester Stenton. Mm -hmm. So, 2390 mm -hmm. Rupert Street. Rupert. You were with Richie yesterday, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where was that? It was over at Charlie Bates's place. Richie came in there real sore. At who? At everybody. And you went up on the roof with him, huh? Yeah. What happened? Went on the roof? Yeah, on the roof. Now you, you go ahead. You just tell me in your own way. Well, after, uh... After Charlie told Richie that he couldn't give him a job, uh, Rich got real sore and mean, you know? But, uh, you know, Richie and me are buddies, so he tells me everything. So he tells me how his uh, father is planning to heist this place where he used to work. I don't know, in the industrial diamonds. It's weird. Lester, look, I want you to do me a favor tomorrow. Sure. What? I, I want you to tell Charlie... I'm sorry what I said. I'm sorry I said drop dead. Well, why can't you tell him? Because I'm going to be in jail. <laughs> why? What'd you do? Are you hot? No, I'm not hot. Not <laughs> yet. Well, then talk sense. I'm going to do a little breaking and entering. <laughs> All right. Okay, Richie, when do we start? We don't start. It's just gonna be me. Well, now, come on, Richie. I mean, after all, a guy's got to share with his best friend. I'm just gonna do it to stop my father. You know, wait a minute. Richie. Richie! Don't do it. I've got to. Well, just tell me why. 
My father's a working slob. Today he got a bad deal, and he got fired. He's been a working slob all his life, and he's been on my back all that time. But I gotta tell you something. I really love that guy. But just do what I say, huh? And I'll listen. Well, look, I ain't gonna let you put your head in no noose. Oh, come on. Now listen. If you wanna get out of here, you're gonna have to get past me. What do I wanna hurt you for, huh? Hey, good luck. Hey, ah! off. I went back down to uh, Charlie Bates's place to do some more work. That's where you were when Richie's father came looking for you. That's where I was. Mm -hmm. Then how come when Richie's father asked you to go down to the settlement house to look for him, you never went? Well, that's easy. Because he never asked me. I mean, he was pretty drunk. Is that what he told you? Well, he probably didn't even remember what he was saying. Look, he, he told me that he was going over to the settlement house to look for Richie. We told him to go on home and go to bed. Is there anything that you'd like to add? No. I guess it's okay uh, if I go home now, huh? No, I don't know. I think you better stick around for a little while. There's a couple of points we'd like to have you check out for us. Sure. Anything you say. Everybody's story with everybody else's, huh? Yes, this is where we find out who's lying to whom about what. Well, good luck, gentlemen. Personally, I hope the butler did it. Well, that's very good, Libby. But in this case, we just don't have a butler. and it's still not going to make any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, how can we tell which one of them is lying unless we compare the two statements? But, Mike, that's the very point. We have nothing to compare to. There's no frame of reference. No, no, it's still one story against the other. Okay, supposing I give you a frame of reference. Like what? A possibility. Meaning what? Meaning... The boy says he killed the guard at 10-12. Now, if the father says the same thing at the same time, then one of them has got to be lying. Unless they're in it together. All right. Let's go over all the things they did. Right. Now, the boy came down this way. This was the path he took. Then the father says he's looking for the boy. He comes around the front of the factory. He's not there, so he goes around the back, sees the window, goes in. Of course, the boy is still inside the plant. Wait and a minute. How does he know the boy's inside the factory? How's he know he's inside? The window's open. No, no, Mike. He specifically stated that the window was closed. I mean, he said it was unlocked, but he said it was closed, remember? Yeah. It's possible that the old man was passing the window. The window was closed, but he heard a shot. And that's what brought him inside. That's it. The son killed the guard. But the father's telling us he killed the guy to protect the kid. Oh, come on. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. Look, what's to stop it from me just the other way around? Suppose the boy saw his father kill the guard and he's lying to us to protect his father. Okay. You prove that to a logical conclusion, I'll buy it. Look, let's go over this again, huh? The father's story contradicts the story of the son. 
The son's story contradicts the story of the father. Now, it's quite possible, Mike, that they're both lying. Of course, if they are, they have to have a reason. Nobody lies without a reason. What would the son gain by telling us he had a fight with the father if he really didn't? And what would the father gain by telling us that he told his family he was going to rob Atherton's if he really didn't tell them that? And incidentally, what happened with the diamonds? Yeah, what about the diamonds? We didn't find them on the son or the father or the premises. Even though the arrest occurred in this case seven minutes after the killing, and in this case five minutes after the killing. Adam, are you trying to tell us that neither one of them did it? Look at this. Both of these stories are so constructed that one protects the other. Now, Mike, we can't possibly accept a confession that's designed to protect someone else. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Look, Mike, suppose you know something happened, and you know you didn't do it. Then it figures that you know somebody else did it, right? And if that somebody else happens to be someone you love, then you might take a chance and try to protect them. You might even sign a confession, right? But in this case, two confessions about the same thing at the same time, and it's very possible that both of these parties are innocent. Okay, Adam. You took us to this dead end. Now, where do we go from here? I don't know. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I have an idea. Let's bring both of them back in here together. And let's tell them both that now we know that it isn't possible that either one of them did this thing. That we know they're both innocent. Then have them repeat to us once more the whole story all over again. I'd like then to see if there are any changes. Well, what about it, Mike? Okay, go. Look, fellas. Now, all we want is a true version so we can help you. Now, you each have only given us a half a story. How can we get anything out of this thing until we put both halves together? I told you the true story. Now, I want you to shut up and stop lying. He's only a minor. You can't put any faith in what he tells you. Look, you two think you're protecting each other, don't you? Don't you realize you can be indicted? Your refusal to tell the truth can send one or both of you to the electric chair. Richie, why did you believe your father was guilty? He was standing over... Standing over what, Richie? The guard? The dead guard? Go ahead, Richie. Tell us the true story from the beginning. I went looking for my father. I was going to try to stop him from going in. Pop! You scared me, bitch. You Lester. Oh, Lester, what are you doing here? I tried to come down and stop you. What kind of buddy do you think I am? Well, just leave me alone, will you? Rich. Rich, come on, let's get out of here, huh? Richie. Richie, come on. Richie, look, you can't stop him anymore. I just saw him go in. I swear, I saw him go in just before. Come on. Richie. Richie. Hey, 
street. When you came in, you saw your son ringing the alarm, you saw the dead guard on the floor, and so you assumed your son did it, right? Yes. And you found the window open when you came in? Yes, the window was open. Then why did you lie about it the first time you told the story? For the same reason Richie did. The window being open, I figured someone was there before me. And who else could it be but Richie? Except Lester. Richie? How come you didn't tell us that Lester was there last night? I didn't think it made any difference. I... I didn't want to get a buddy in trouble because he was trying to help me out. And if I mentioned Lester, I would have to mention my father. friend, Lester. Anybody has you for a friend can really count on you. Mighty sweet stories you tell, too, Lester. Except you leave out the little unimportant things, like who got the diamonds and who was it killed the guard. Come on, let's go. No! Wilkin, nothing makes out as simple as it looks. What do you know but a hunger I got to get out of this rat trap of a place I'm stuck in? Fifteen thousand dollars. That that take me to to Tahiti. It, it take me to to, to New Zealand or, or Venezuela. You asked Richie how many times we sat up there on the roof talking about going away to far countries. I didn't want to hurt Richie. I didn't want to hurt your husband. I heard that word. Diamonds. And I told myself I'm going to go get them. I, I didn't take no gun. I didn't even take a knife. I just went and I got him. And then this this guard jumps me and, and, and we, 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 we struggling around. And all of a sudden I hear his gun go off. And he falls down. And I run. And all I hear in my head over and over Is Lester? Hey, you gotta go to a foreign country. So now I gotta go to jail. I'm afraid. I'm really afraid. Come on. Eight million stories in the Naked City. This has been one of them. Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.